differential equations, the word differential, what word does that sound like that we've seen many, 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 many times? Differential. Differential is a noun. You've seen the action, the verb, many times. Not so much yes and no. It's not derivative. What is it? What's the action word you have seen? Differentiate, Differentiate right? Which means an action of finding a derivative, right? That's where differential equations come from. They're just equations that are derivative equations. That's it. So when you took an equation back in last semester, right? Oops. Oops. Last semester, when you took an equation, when there was an equation y equals x squared plus 2x minus 1, and you found the derivative. Oh, the derivative is dy dx equals 2x plus 2, right? You guys can do that in your sleep. That's a differential equation. This guy right here is a differential equation, right? And then what you, how you use that is what we've been working on, right? What, what we worked on, how we use it, what its uses are, all that good stuff. That's all we're dealing with here. These are differential equations, okay? You're gonna see a lot of dy dx's. Dy dx's means it's a derivative. They already found the derivative. That's the derivative, okay? So like the first one, an equation like dy dx equals x to the third power over y. That's a derivative. They found a derivative, just like we did here. Just like I did here, I found the derivative. Okay. There it is. And there it is right there. Okay. That's all there is. That's all it is. That's all these are. Differential equations. This one in the middle is, a, is second derivative, right? It's second derivative because it's got the two and the two. But this is a derivative. That's a derivative. That's a second derivative. That's a derivative, right? So an equation containing a derivative is called a differential equation. So nothing you guys haven't seen before, okay? The order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative involved in the equation. The problem of finding a function of y of x when given its derivative and its value at a particular point is called the initial value problem, okay? That's what we're gonna be doing today, okay? The previous examples are all called separable differential equations because it is possible to separate all of the x's and all of the y's. Anytime you can separate x's and y's, it's called separable, okay? When given a separable differential equation in Leibniz form, Leibniz form just means dy dx. The other form is um, from Newton, which is like y prime, right? Y prime, if I said what's, if I said y prime, what would you think? If I said y prime, what would you think? First derivative. First derivative, right? If I said dy dx, what would you think? First derivative, right? That's all they're saying. Leibniz form just uses dy dx's. Newton form uses y primes. Okay, so that's all that means by Leibniz form. Same thing, nothing, nothing, nothing different there. It is mandatory to show the separation of variables by rewriting the function in differentiable form. So the process of finding the antiderivative of each side is called indefinite integration. We just did that whole chapter with that, right? Finding antiderivatives is called indefinite integration. We can denote this operation with an integration symbol by taking the integral of both sides. So our first job is to separate. Separate. Well, actually, let's go right here. 
Here's our steps right here. I want you to read the steps. Read the steps to yourself because we're going to do them in about 30 seconds. We're going to use those steps. Okay. First step. What's the first step? Move mm -hmm. everything y including dy to the left and move everything x including dx to the y. All right. So here's our differential. <coughs> here's our differential here. This is our differential equation. It's a derivative. Right? The derivative is sine of x. First step says move everything with a y to the left of the equation. Right? When I say left of the equation, I mean if I draw a line on the equal sign, left of the equal sign, right of the equal sign. Everything with a y goes to the right, or with a, to the left, everything with an x goes to the right. All right? dy dx equals sine of x. So what has to move? DX. DX has to move to the other side of the equation, right? So how do I do that? Mm -hmm. There you go, right? This is a division problem, right? If I want to move the bottom guy, I have to. It's being divided by, right? So I'm going to multiply both sides like you guys have done many, many times. The DXs cancel out. I get dy equals sine of x dx. Okay. Nothing with a left, nothing with a y on the right side, nothing with an x on the left. Okay, done. What's step two say? Integrate both sides. Integrate both sides. Okay, so here we go. Throw an integral in there. Integrate both sides. This side here. What am I integrating? What am I finding the antiderivative of? Okay, so what's the antiderivative of dy? Okay. What is the function over here, though? What is the function that I'm... dy is not a function. dy is the 1, right? It's actually a 1 there, right? And what's the derivative, or what's the antiderivative of 1? x or y, or whatever letter you're using, right? That's why we got y. It's so simple that it's hard sometimes. Some people are like, what? But it's so simple that it's hard. Okay, so it's not hard, but I can understand how sometimes it gets confusing. Okay, so now we got this side. Antiderivative of sine of x. What's the antiderivative of sine of x? Negative cosine of x. Right? And then plus c, right? Plus c, since they don't have bounds, usually we put the plus c on the right side. Okay. All right. What's the next step now? What does a third step say after we integrate? If you're given the point, plug in the point and solve for c. Before that, we should solve for y. Does it say that in there? Does it say solve for y anywhere? No, last thing, solve for it. Never mind. Okay, we'll do that last. So plug in the point, right? And we're given a point. What's the point we're given? Zero, two, right? Zero, two. Zero is x, two is y. Plug it in. OK. 
Okay, solve for C, the unknown. Well, negative cosine of zero. Well, what is positive cosine of zero? One, so that would make this negative one plus C equals two. Add one to both sides. C equals three. Now I know what C is. So I'm going to rewrite this guy, y equals negative cosine of x plus c, which is 3. And it's already solved for y. A couple of terms I'm going to throw at you because they're going to throw them at you. One term is called the particular solution. Sometimes they'll say, I want the particular solution or the specific solution. That's that guy there. Sometimes they'll say, I want the general solution. General solution. General solution, we already did. The general solution is here. Just depends on which one they want. They want the general solution or they want the particular specific solution. Those are the different ones that we have. General solution as a C. Notice how both of them are solved for y. It's not a solution unless you solve for y. Okay? So you have to solve for y. Always solve for y. So if they want a general solution, make sure you solve for y. If they want a particular solution, make sure you solve for y. Okay? Because if you don't, it's not a solution. Okay? This one, luckily, it was already solved for y, so we didn't have to do anything extra. But not always. That won't always be the case. So what does this all mean? This guy right here. Why is this a solution? What does that mean when I say this is a solution? Again, it's so simple, you might not even think of it. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. That's how we got the answer, right? But what does it mean when I say, why is this a solution? to the guy in yellow. What does that mean? How are these two related? The particular solution and the yellow and the differential equation, how are they related? Mm -hmm. You're getting there, you're close. Find the derivative of that guy. What do you get? Right? That's what we mean by solutions. We're solving for the original. Okay? We're solving for the original solution. This is the derivative. What was the original solution? That guy right there. How do you know it's right? Well, if I found the derivative of that, guess what I better get? That guy right there. That's how you can check your answer by finding the derivative. Okay? All right, let's do the second one. I think this one's miswritten. Because they already give you. Okay, so this one is written differently than you will probably see it. They've already done most of the work, right? They've already separated. This is the way you'll used to you probably see it regularly. And solve. But they've already done that step. They've already separated the x's and the y's. So that's why you have dy equals 3x squared dx. So they've already done step one for you which most of the time will not be done. Oops. OK. 
Okay. So the antiderivative of dy is just y, 1y. The antiderivative of 3x squared is 3x to the third power divided by 3 plus c. So that's y equals x to the third power plus c. That is the general solution. That is the general solution. Okay. The specific condition, the particular solution, where you need to solve for C. Okay. We got a point. Two negative three, right? So we get negative 3 equals 8 plus C. Subtract 8 from both sides. Plug it back in. There's the particular solution. Again, how do I know that's right? If I found the derivative of the particular solution or the general solution, I would get 3x squared. You know you did it right. Okay. All right, let's see here. Next one. Acceleration of a body moving along a coordinate line can be modeled by the function acceleration equals cosine of t. Find the velocity and the position if these guys are true. So this one's a application question. What do we know about velocity, position, acceleration? What do we know about those three things? We've heard about those three things quite a bit. What do we know? What's the, what's the relationship between velocity, acceleration, position? What's the, what's, the, what's the relationship between those three? Okay, so let's write this down. Position. It's written in your notes, but it's good to rewrite. So position is usually s of t or x of t, right? Velocity is the first derivative of position. Acceleration is the second derivative of position, the first derivative of velocity. Okay. So right now we're starting at the bottom. We're starting with acceleration, right? And we need to work our way up. Last semester, we worked our way down. They gave you position and they said, what's velocity? They gave you velocity and said, what's acceleration? They gave you position and they said, what's acceleration? You worked your way down by finding derivatives. Now we got to do the opposite. So what do we do first? What do we do? How do we do this? What are we going to do? Okay, so we have acceleration. Okay. So we have acceleration equals cosine of t. Okay. Well, if we want velocity, we have to find the antiderivative.
Okay. Well, what's the antiderivative of acceleration? Okay, so V of T equals, and what's the antiderivative of cosine? Mm -hmm. Plus C, right? That's the general solution. Okay. So now do we know points for velocity to find out what C is? We do. All right, we do, it's up here. V of zero equals negative one. So negative one is the y, zero is the x. Well, we don't, we're not using x here, we're using t, right? t is x, is the independent. So everywhere I see a v of t, I'm gonna put a one, negative one, and everywhere I see a t, I'm gonna put a zero. Sine of zero is zero. C plus zero equals negative one. That means negative one has to be C. V of T equals sine of T minus one. Okay, we're not done yet. We fi find the velocity and functions. Okay, well, that's half of the question. Here's the, here's the particular solution. For velocity, now I have to find the particular solution for position. Well, Velocity is the antiderivative or the derivative of position, so I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. The antiderivative of velocity is position. The antiderivative of sine of t minus 1, well, sine, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. We just did that one last problem. And the antiderivative of negative 1 is negative t. Okay? Again, plus c, sorry, plus c. That's the general solution for acceleration. Now I have to find the particular solution for acceleration, or sorry, not for acceleration, for position. Position, sorry. I'm gonna plug in the point they give me for position. Zero, one. Zero for x, y, one. Or t, sorry, I keep saying x. Okay, well, cosine of zero is one with a negative in front, it's negative one minus zero plus C. Add one to both sides. The zero is just zero. C equals, oops.
है सो द पर्टिकुलर सोल्यूशन फॉर दिस गाय इज एस ऑफ टी इक्वल्स नेगेटिव को साइन ऑफ टी माइनस टी प्लस टू Again, how can I check my answer? Well, if you were to find derivative of this guy here, you better get this guy here. And if you were to find derivative of this guy here, you better get this guy here. If all of that's true, then you're good. Okay? Okay, so the rest of what we're going to do today is exactly the same. It's just different problems. These are different problems, different situations. We've done a couple trig. Now we're going to do some that are, it's all the same though. It's all the same. Nothing new, just the function is going to be a little bit different. So this one we have dy dx equals x squared plus 3 over y. 3y, sorry. That's the derivative. I found the derivative, that's what it is. So now I have to solve for the particular solution or the initial particular solution. Says. Well, step one, separate. Separate. Y's go left, if they're not already left, X's go right. Well. Multiply both sides by dx. How do I get y on the other side? Three, three y on the other side. Mm -hmm. Multiply both sides by three y, yeah. So I have 3y dy equals x squared plus 3dx. So anything with a y is to the left, anything with a y with a x is to the right. Antiderivative. The antiderivative of 3y. 3y squared divided by 2. The antiderivative of x squared is x to the third divided by 3 plus 3x plus c. What's the next step? So you could either, you could do two things. You can solve for y now, it's okay. Or you can plug in your points now. Either one is okay. So if you said, I'm gonna solve for y, go for it. You can, you can do that, that works. Or you can plug in your points and solve for c now. It doesn't matter. Do whatever easiest, do whatever makes sense to you because steps, I know on our steps up here, it says plug in first and then solve for y. You don't have to do it that way. You can, steps three and four are interchangeable. Okay. I'm going to plug in the points just because that's what I'm going to do. We, it, it doesn't mean that's the right answer. It just means that's what I'm doing. Okay. So here's our points here. Here's where it gets a little dicey. What do I plug in for 3 and what do I plug in for negative 4? Where do I plug 3 in and where do I plug negative 4 in? Hmm? Yeah. A lot of people see this 3 by the y and they're like, oh, y is 3. No. This is the dependent. This is y. And this is x. Or sorry, the other way around. This is x and this is y. Why, why do I keep saying it like that? That's the independent, x, 
but that's the dependent y. Remember, we're used to seeing f of x, right? Just because it has a y in front doesn't change anything. So 3 for x, negative 4 for y. So you should, the only variable left should be x, or sorry, c. That's what we're solving for. Okay, so three halves. Let me get another sheet here. Three halves times 16 equals one third times 27 plus nine plus c. Well, 16 and 3 halves makes a 24. 1 third times 27 is just 9. Because 27, oops. Plus 9 plus C. Twenty four equals eighteen plus C. Subtract eighteen from both sides. You get six equals C. We're not done because we haven't found the particular solution. I found C. So let me go back to the equation here. This guy right here. This is where we left off. That guy is where I'm going to plug in C2. So 3 over 2 y squared equals 1 third x cubed plus 3x plus 6. That's what C was. Now you got to solve for y. How do I solve for y? This is algebra now. Nothing new, nothing to do with calculus. Divide by two thirds on both sides. Mm -hmm. Divide by three halves, which is the same thing as multiplying by two thirds, right? So I'm gonna multiply everything by two thirds. So I get y squared equals, you can distribute the two thirds. And I get two ninths y cubed, or sorry, x cubed, plus two x plus four. When I distribute the two thirds, now we take the square root of both sides. Y equals the square root of 2 ninths x cubed plus 2x plus 4. But when we take the square root, what do we also have to take account of? When we're solving and we take a square root, what do we also have to take account of? Anytime we're solving something and we take the square root. Let me give you an easier problem that you've seen before many times. Uh, x squared equals 4. Take the square root. What's the answer? Mm -hmm. Plus or minus 2, right? It's the same thing here. It's the same thing here, okay? Give me a second then. Let's see. So 
So when you square root, you must consider whether we need the positive square root or the negative square root, because you won't need both of them, okay? Since So since the point, since we have to look at the point, right? Um, so the point means that point, the yellow guy, right, has to be on this graph, right? That's what it means, right? So when I plug in three to my, this guy, shouldn't I get negative four as an answer? Isn't that what this says? If I plug in three, I should get negative four as an answer. Would I get negative four as an answer? Yeah. Only if what? Plug in negative four, see what you get. Or plug in three, see what you get. Do you get negative four as an answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's a positive out in front, am I going to get negative 4 as an answer? No, I'm going to get positive 4, right? So, because of that, we only want the negative one. That's the answer. If you put positive, they'll mark you wrong. Okay? So you got to be careful with that. An easy way to check that is if I have a root, the answer always has to be what? If I have a root, your answer is always going to be positive. Always. Right? Well, it has to equal negative number. So that means I need a negative out here. Okay? All right. If that was positive 4, then yeah, you're right. The answer would be positive. We wouldn't need the negative. But because it's negative, we do. Okay? All right, so now what I want you to do is I want you to do number five. Try number five on your own. Try number five. Okay, so when you separate and you find the antiderivative, that's as far as I've gotten. So I did the first two steps. The next step is either solve for y or plug in your x and your y. Okay, so I get negative 6 for x, 3, negative 3 for y. Move this over here. So negative 6 for y. Nope, negative 3 for y. Negative 6 for x. So I get 20 or 2 thirds times negative 27 equals negative 1 half times 36. That becomes a negative 9, that becomes a 1, that becomes an 18, that becomes a 1. So I get negative 18 equals negative 18 plus C. Add 18 to both sides, you get 0. C equals 0. OK. So bring in this guy back again. Now I know I don't have a C. That's it. Last step, solve for C, or solve for Y, sorry. Multiply both sides by 3 halves. 
we get y to the third equals um, negative 3 over 4. Take the third root. Since it's the third root, I do not need. Since it's the third root, I don't need a plus or minus. Third root, fifth root, seventh root, odd roots, you don't need plus or minus. Even if it's negative. Even if my y is negative. My y is negative, I know that, but you don't need that. Second roots or square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots, you need plus or minus. And you are done. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do, let's see. I don't really want to get into this one because this one gets into some other stuff. So um, six and seven, what I might do tomorrow is I might, we're going to finish six and seven, but then I might give you some time to practice those first on your own before we go into slope fields. Okay. Um, because mix in some natural logs in here too. There's going to be some natural logs in here as well. So, We'll do practice with those tomorrow. Okay.